So we've got normals that are just, they're not really working, but they're almost working, and boy, it'd be beautiful if they were working. So let's go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and borrow all of our code here that we've written already, wonderful. And now we're gonna dive right in here to uh, doing our normal recalculation at the fragment stage or in the pixel shader. That's, that's the trick we're gonna start with here. So, you know, you might well be asking, all right, well, ha where did you find, how'd you figure this out, dude? Is, ha help me learn how to fish. Don't just give me fish. Um, and the way that we can start to kind of understand where some of this trickery is gonna come into play is if we added our fong, material back in here, right? So let's grab our fong again. And, and let's take our fong, and what if we applied this as a bump map, right? That's, you know, part of what we're after is this kind of idea. And if we output our shader from here, all right, what we would see is we would get a bunch of information, is we could actually see um, what touch is doing under the hood to make all this work. And this is a part of where this particular kind of technique comes from is figuring out, okay, well, here's a normal map. Uh, here's a normal, aha, I see, I see, I see. This is like, this is the, the bit of trickery that's gonna go on here. So we're gonna take advantage of some of the same ideas here when we do this ourselves. Um, we are gonna have to make a few changes, that's totally okay. We're going to be just fine doing that. Oops. Make that viewer active. Bring that home. I'm going to go ahead and reset our rotation translations on this. And let's turn our displacement scale down to 0.25, a little smaller. Oh, it's all, they're almost right. They're just not right. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the periodicity of this up just a little bit. So we can, you know, it's almost there, but it's not right. What, what can we do? Okay, so if we did this thing that we did here, right, we'd see, you know, output our shader. It's two-sided, great, wonderful. We'd see there are a bunch of interesting things that uh, we need to add in here. We'll notice that, you know, the whole structure of this is a little bit different. That's totally copacetic. Um, and we're going to go ahead and do some similar kind of uh, work to get this caught up. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up our vertex shader to start doing a little bit of this stuff. Uh, one of the things that we need to do is we need to actually introduce our tangents here into our equation. And so to make that work, we're going to go ahead and scoot this right along. Move this on down the line here. I'm going to get rid of that convert for a moment. I'm going to insert an attribute create because that's actually what I want. I'm going to go ahead and compute my tangents. Wonderful. So those are already computed for me. And now in my vertex shader, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to add, um, I'm going to add in our tangents. And by adding our tangents, what I mean is I'm going to expose our tangents that are already on our geometry uh, to us so that we can actually manipulate them and use them. And we can do that. We can use in vec4 t. All right. With any luck, we don't have any errors yet. Wonderful. That's great. So we're going to have to do um, a handful of things here. It's going to be real exciting. I'm bound to get some errors. Hopefully, uh, we manage to survive. Keep your fingers crossed, and we'll see. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this, this business. We don't want to do this because we're actually going to do our normal recalculation in uh, the fragment stage. So we're going to rely on just our original normals here. We do need to calculate the bitangent. because we're going to end up using that. Uh, and we can do that. That's going to be a VEC3. We can call that BTAN. And we can calculate that by looking at the cross product of N and our tangent XYZ. 
and we're going to multiply that by TW. This is the handedness, right? This is uh, TXYZ represents the vector of our tangent. TW is the handedness of that, which is, you know, if you looked at um, this example, you should see uh, down here that we see this business. It's added right here. T dot W hold the handedness of the tangent vector. Okay, great. Well, what does that mean? We're not going to worry about it too much for right now. Um, but it's going to be important. The kind of deeper you fall down this rabbit hole, the more valuable it is to know all of the things that you can know about what's going on uh, with, your, with your vertices. Okay. Back to our vertex shader. Okay, so we've got our, uh, we've added T in here. We've got our B tangent here. Okay, so far so good. We actually need to add something here into our struct. Now, our, our struct is how we pass information from one stage to another stage, right? So we could probably, uh, we could and couldn't do some of this in the, the fragment stage. Right, because it's hard to kind of shuffle memory around and shuffle around the things that are happening from one place to another. And that's part of what we're doing with our struct. Is we're actually going to do some computation in our vectors in our vertex shader. We're going to pass that on over to our uh, fragment shader so that we don't have to worry about doing that again. Um, and we can do all that with the information we know here. It's already computed rather than having to do another set of computations. Essentially, we're trying to save ourselves some work. The catch here is that we need to make sure that our struct is uh, formatted the same way on both sides. So when we add something here into the top part of our struct, we're going to have to also add it into the top part of our struct in our pixel shader. We'll see what that means. Okay, so uh, we're going to add um, a matrix. Uh, to this struct. Uh, and we're going to call this mat3 tbn range it right and that's tangent by tangent and normal that's what that stands for um, we also need to add in a vec2 that's our text our texture coordinates um, and touch's way of doing this calls this text chord zero so we can follow um, you know that convention here as well it's no, no harm, no foul in doing that. So let's go ahead and add in text chord zero. Now we'll see right here, once we save this, okay, everything is ground to a halt. And if we take a look over here, we can see that our, uh, the order within our interface block, our struct is different, right? All of a sudden things are, are out of whack. Uh, and that's all right. Let's go ahead and fix that part first. So here, I'm going to go ahead and just pull out these two, because those are the ones that we need. I'm going to get rid of these other stragglers. We'll put these two, two together, because these are actually what we're actually looking at, right? OK. So here, this is our pixel shader over here. This is uh, our vertex shader. Let's go ahead and just pull these pieces. We're going to do a little copy-paste situation and make sure that that's before color. Right? We just want to make sure that our struct matches on both sides. Okay, so just by making our struct match, we resolve this particular error. error. Great. So now let's go ahead and put some uh, data into some of those um, bits, right? So we're going to go ahead and do that down here. Um, let's do, well, quick thing. So our struct here, right, is called vvert. Right, so we're passing out of our vertex stage this thing called vvert. So down here, if we want to um, kind of fill in some of those variables, we need to start with vvert. So vvert text chord zero. That's where we're going to stick our UV coordinates from our geometry. Now nothing's going to happen there yet. That's okay. Um, it's just going to be really handy to get our, our texture coordinates over there. We're going to need them. OK, the next thing we need to do is we need to set up our transformation matrix. Transformation matrix for normal recalculation. Okie dokie, all right. 
So we've got this uh, matrix up here, right? Da -da -da, or map three TBN, and now we gotta fill that stuff in. So vvert TBN, and what I wanna do is I want to, oops, blammo. I wanna keep all these perfectly lined up. I don't know why it matters to me, but I like it so much. Okay, so um, vvert or TBN, let's go ahead and let's stick our tangents x, y, z in here. And while we're at it, we'll um, put in our bitangent, etan, and then we'll also stick in our normals. Okay, so we got all that good stuff here, bloop, plunked right into our vertex shader. And again, nothing's happening yet, but we're passing that information actually right on over to our pixel shader. So now we get to dig in over here in our pixel shader. So what is going on here? Okay. So we need to do a few things to kind of get at this. We're going to need our, uh, our normal map um, again. So let's also, before we get too far, let's borrow this same declaration. We already wrote it once. We might as well just reuse it here in our pixel shader. So far, so good. That's looking just slick. Here, down after our specular sum, right, here's all the stuff, this one line is how we're handing our normals. And that's actually the line that we're going to replace. And I'm going to, our code is going to go here. Uh, and I'm doing this just so it's easier to see what we're up to. I'm going to copy this. Oops. I'm going to stick that after our code block as well just so we have an easy way to see it. Okay, so uh, these lines, and I'm all about commenting here, these lines uh, set up our normal recalculation. Okay, so what are we gonna do? So first, let's make a VEC3 that's our norm a normal map. And we're going to use our same texture technique, texture, that we learned before. In this case, we're going to go ahead and use that displacement texture. And for our vertex coordinates, we're going to use vvert, and we're going to go ahead and take advantage of that text chord zero that we passed over. And we only want RGB. We don't want to worry about alpha. We're already using alpha, right, that alpha channel in the vertex stage to do our height displacement. Okay, so that's looking good so far. Uh, feeling good about it. Let's go ahead and make a VEC3 called normal. Right, so we've got a normal here. And we want this normal to be 2.0 times our norm map values minus 0 0.5. What's going on, Matt? Well, so I'm going to subtract 0 0.5, right? I'm going to like, uh, it's kind of a normalizing operation is kind of what we're up to here. Now you'll see that we've already have this normal line in here. So we're going to have to get rid of that for a second. Um, and this is going to make it look uh, probably oh, not as bad as I was expecting. I was expecting it to look way less good. That's all right. Okay, wonderful. So we've got one thing set up here. Lovely, jubbly. Let's go ahead and take our normal. And while we're at it, um, let's do take our vvert, our translation matrix, and we're going to multiply that. We could just do this. We could do uh, times equal vvert tbn. All right, 
And then finally, we're gonna do, we're gonna take our normal. Normal. And we're gonna normalize it. Okay. And this, these four lines should be all we need here to get some normals that look a little bit better. Yeah, okay, all right. That is looking much more like what we should expect to see from our light. I'm gonna go ahead and move our light back to zero and say back to like five. And yeah, that is way nicer. We can you know rotate this here a little bit. And that's much more, it's much closer, right, to what we were expecting um, for all of this to look like. Now our light's still pretty close. We could probably move our light a little bit further back. Um, if we wanted to, we could also play with the displacement scale here, right? We'll kind of get more or less of what we're after here. Um, but this is a fine way for us to think about how we might do some of this normal recalculation um, right here in a combination of our vertex shader uh, and in our fragment shader. Now this isn't the only way um, that we can do this. This is just one way for us to think about doing this. Um, but this gets us much closer to the kind of effect that we're probably after. Right, if we were to you know dump this down the corner here, and let's do something fun. Like let's grab a sphere and we'll texture. All right, we'll fix our texture coordinates. We'll plug that into our attribute create. And let's crank this up a little bit, 250, 250. All right. We could probably make this just a little bit smaller so it's easier to see, and we could turn up that displacement scale. All right. So, you know, we've got a little seam here around the edge. We could probably uh, figure out the right way to fix that um, so it doesn't cause us any silliness. Um, but we're kind of after the, the, we're headed in the right direction here, finally, in terms of what we want uh, to kind of make this thing work the right way, hopefully, at least. And we should find that if we change the orientation here of our normals, or the orientation of our plane, uh, assuming that we can see it from our camera's perspective, um, that it's gonna show up the right way. Oh, right, I'm like all transformed here, I forgot. Uh, so let's say, do you like this? And we need to move our light probably up a little bit. So that actually makes sense. All right. So far, so good. We're making good pro good progress here. That still looks, oh, right, of course. That does make sense. Um, does it? That light, oh. Oh, we're inverted. Ooh, good, all right. We missed something here. Let's, oh, I love it when we find things like this. This is great. Um, this is a great time to, let's open up our geometry viewer for one real fast second here. Uh, home this. Let's see if we can find our light. We're gonna move that closer. Say so like five instead. Um, let's make it bigger too. Where'd you go? Where are you, Lightsy? Let's add a new light. <laughs> Hopefully one that we can see. Um, there it is. All right. We'll put that at five instead. Just puts it right in the middle of our, there we go. All right, excellent, and if we move this, aha, we just, we have an inverted placement someplace. Uh, that's all right, let's quick take a look 
at what we've got going on in here and we should be able to fix this with any luck. Let's, you know, for fun games and profit, I'm just gonna do this instead. Normal is gonna be a back three. Ah, there we go. I had a, I'm just backwards in this one, one operation here. Whew, lordy. Okay, so we're going to take our transformation matrix and multiply it by our normal. We're going to skip that times equal malarkey that I did. Aha, there we go. And now we have something that behaves the way that we think that it ought to. Oof, golly, goodness, pardon me. Boy, golly. Making trouble here, making waves. Okay, and we should, aha, that's great. We should also see some lovely behavior the way that we expect uh, here, finally. Ah, uh, yeah, killer. Um, when it comes to the behavior of uh, our normals, especially with the position of our lights. Oh, keep dokey. Whew, lordy, lord have mercy. Um, so that's one way that we can solve this problem. We'll look at another way we can solve this problem here in just one moment. So hang tight and we will do some more normal calculation or recalculation.